So our next discussion will be on section view drawings. If you take a look at unit six in your course pack, you'll see that is the first part of this unit. Section views are a specialty kind of view that's occasionally needed while working on technical drawings. Make sure that you've got the guided notes downloaded for the lecture so you're able to follow along and get all the high points. So without further ado, section view drawings. Fact of the matter is that everything you've learned up to this point <coughs> about representing objects in engineering format has been accurate, uh, but at times the format is confusing. For example, take a look at the front view of this disk-like object here. Take a look at its side view, and I think you'll agree there's a lot of stuff going on over here. There's an awful lot of hidden lines, and while hidden lines are supposed to clarify things, in this case they confuse things. The drawing is much harder to understand than it should be. So a standard view in multi-view drawing with visible lines, hidden lines, center marks and center lines, these hidden lines are just a mess. So we're going to consider a different kind of view that shows the same information but much, much more clearly. And this is a section view. So for this object, if we were to slice it in half from the top quadrant through the bottom quadrant, right where that dark, heavy cutting plane line is indicated, and then we were to look in the direction of these arrowheads, well, we would see where the part was solid and where the part was hollow. And that's what a section view does. It shows you interior structure as well as the exterior shape on complex items. The basic idea is what would things look like if you took a saw blade and sawed through the object. Right? So here's our block of metal with a couple of counterbore holes. If we were to slice right down the center of those holes and then look at that view, what would we see? Well, we would see where it was solid metal. We'd see where it was hollow. The hollow areas are just outlined, but the solid areas have these thin section lines added. So what you get is an interior view, uh, and sometimes we find some surprising stuff in there, right? So the number one use of section views is to clarify the interior features. That would be hard to tell, hard to distinguish by looking at just hidden lines. The number one use of section views is to clarify things that might be confusing otherwise with hidden lines as far as interior features or interior structure goes. This is an example of a section view. Now, just think about it. We're cutting away at this pump, right? So we want to see what happens on the inside. Well, since the object is solid, that's kind of tough. Uh, but when we draw it in this fashion or represent it like this, well, all of a sudden it's easy to understand what's going on in there. This is done in architecture, too. Architectural drawings often show the plan or looking down on the building. They show an elevation looking at the building. Uh, but then sometimes we want to slice through the building to see what is the interior structure. And that's what we have here. We can see interior details like this fireplace and this doorway. We can see the height of a person relative to the ceiling areas. We see structural beams. And we see where we cut through doors and windows. We can see floor framing members and the foundation and basement. See, that normally wouldn't be visible from just the outside. In this example, this is more of a commercial building, we can see floors and ceilings uh, with the dark, heavy, filled-in areas, and then we can tell which areas have especially high ceiling, like over here, and which have the more standard height ceiling, like the rest of these places. <coughs> Here's another residential example, slicing through the building showing structure, showing things like insulation in the ceiling and then the roof and then the floors, showing the basement area, right? And it's as if we took a big saw and just sliced through the building and could look inside. 
This idea of creating sections is also used in other areas related to uh, civil engineering and geography and geology. Uh, this is a topo map. Maybe you've seen maps like this. We know that each of the contours represents a different elevation. Well, the idea is you can draw a line through a number of contours and you can project those lines where the cut where the cut crosses the contours and get an idea and accurate and accurately represent what the earth looks like where that cut takes place. <coughs> this is another use for section views. Section views are useful when you're dealing with a shape that's very difficult. Here's another use for section views. It's when you're dealing with shapes that are not simple, complex shapes. Now, for example, this beam is a very simple shape. It looks like the letter I. And if you cut it back a foot, or two feet, or four inches, or at five inches, it really wouldn't matter, would it? Wherever you cut it, it has that same profile, that same I shape. Well, not everything is like that. For example, look at our canoe here. If we were to slice through the canoe six inches back from the front point, it would have one profile. And if we went back a foot from there, a different profile. And a foot back, a different pr profile. So shapes that change radically along their length can be documented by using section views. How about your computer mouse? This is not like a brick. It's not like a bar of soap, right? It's a very complex shape. So how do you document for manufacturing that complex shape? Well, you slice it every half of an inch. And at each of the slices, you show me the contour. And then the solid shape is a mesh that binds all of those contours together. See an example here with this Aerlion for, uh, for an airplane? The, uh, the fin is made of three different cross sections that are welded or melded together. This was in a technique used extensively in the automotive industry up until the time, well, fairly recently, when computers kind of got more heavily involved in body design on vehicles. Uh, what you see here is you see a bunch of pieces of foam glued together. And the idea is this is a full-size scale model of this vehicle. Uh, we mock it up using sheets of polystyrene, sections of polystyrene, two inches thick. And then at the end, we cover it over with some clay to give it that smooth, finished appearance. And this is how automotive design was done for a very long time. And basically, we used all of these sections to show the shape of the body of the car. This happens a lot, too, in nautical architecture, naval architecture where we have, for example, a boat or they're like this submarine. Uh, wherever I cut it open, the contours, the shape of the hull is a little bit different. Right? And every time I cut it, I'm cutting through something different. Maybe I'm cutting through uh, the drive. Maybe I'm cutting through the, the fuel storage or a reactor or cargo. Right? So we see the shape of the exterior, but also what's inside it at that point. So best way to do this is to actually cut some stuff open. So let's switch into Iron Chef mode and do some cutting. All right, let's start with a nice easy one. Let's start with our Apple here. So Apple has a front view and uh, has a top view. The front uh, and the side, honestly, not that very much different, are they? So what we want to do is we're going to make this top view of this Apple. And uh, I would ask you just to follow along, you know, and give it a shot. And you can use these as your notes as we are working on these other problems afterward, which are not going to be fruit and vegetables. So, <clears throat> apple. Please draw the top view of an apple. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a tough shape to make. And you're right. So, you're going to need some exceptional skills to capture the shape of the apple. Uh, I've spent many years in school learning how to draw fruit, so you're going to notice that my drawings are just like right on, surprisingly so at times even. So the top view of my apple is pretty roundish, and uh, it's even got a little stem right there in the middle, kind of poking out. 
Now, the name of the game is section, and section means cut, really. Now, we're not actually cutting the part, but we're trying to draw it as if we cut it open to see what's inside there. So, I want to create a front view that shows this apple as a section. So, regular view in the top, section view for the front. And before I can do that, before I can section it, I've got to indicate where I want the cut to take place. All right, so what's going to happen is I need a line on here, and this is going to be a special line. It's a line we haven't used yet. Uh, and it's called a cutting plane line. And a cutting plane line, you see I'm drawing it with a marker, because it is supposed to be dark. Dark and heavy. Maybe the darkest line on the paper, as far as the drawing goes. Now what you're going to want to do is we're going to draw a couple of arrows after it bends 90 degrees and points up. So now, what are we talking about? What does all this mean? Well, it means you're going to cut here, and you're going to look in that direction. So this is the front of the apple, and this is the back. We're going to pull away the front, and we're going to keep the back and look toward the back after that cut is made. So, well, let's do it. I got my apple. I got it right here, and I really don't want to get apple juice all over my drawing board, so I'm going to slice through it something a little bit more hygienic. Okay, so now remember which way the arrows are pointing. The arrows are pointing up, which means take away the half you cut. What's left behind is this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to spin it down to look at the front. Now, kind of cool. Let's have a look and see what we got here. Uh, the front, I've sliced through a lot of this apple. Now, check it out though, I didn't slice through all of it. Do you see this little divot up here, this little dip? Well, that's still the outside of the apple. You can see the skin on there and everything. And uh, down here I have another similar little divot, or a dip, where it didn't get cut. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to capture the shape of this cut apple and do the best you can. This isn't a still life painting class, so don't worry if it's not perfect. But basically, the divot in the top, that's the outside. Divot in the bottom, that is outside also. But the rest of this, solid apple. Totally solid. And then the way that we show things are solid on a section drawing, on a section view, is we're going to add some diagonal lines at 45 degrees. We're going to try to space them evenly. And where it is shaded in like this, with these section lines, we'll know that that part is solid. All right, so now if we were in an art class, there's a name for this stuff. It's called cross-hatching. And, uh, of course, in AutoCAD, there's a command that will do this for you. Toot sweet, right? Uh, the hatch command is used to take an area and fill it in with a repeating pattern of lines. So what we've got here is we've got a top view of the apple. We've included something called a cutting plane line, and make a note of that. Your cutting plane is like a machete, and that's where the chop happens. The front view has been drawn as if we were looking at the cut part of the apple straight on in that direction. And we can see where it is solid, but here we see that's not solid material, it's the apple that we didn't slice through. It's the skin of the apple and the dip right there. A little up there, a little up there. Okay, so this is a section drawing. Now nothing inside this apple was hollow. Uh, I was hoping to hit like a big pocket for seeds. There's not even a seed pocket in this thing. So I'll have to go on to a different example to show you what to do when things are hollow. Keep in mind though, this kind of a section is called a full section. Call a full section. When you chop something in half and you show the whole view completely sectioned, well, it's fully sectioned. 
All right, and that is our first example.